this is Courtney. I am back with another novel. Now we're gonna really get into this novel, okay? I need to take this nail polish off because it is smudged. Didn't last too long, but that's okay. So let's get in this book. This book is called I Am Watching You. It is a psychological suspense thriller, drama, whatnot. It's about Ella, who is this florist in England, and she is on a train on her way to London. And while aboard the train, she sees these two teenage girls. And she's, you know, eavesdropping a little bit, you know how we do. And she sees that they're talking to these, you know, a little bit older, you know, good looking young men. So she's eavesdropping and the girl asked, hey, what, what's in the bag? And the guy goes, hey, we just was released from jail. And so this is our belongings. Apparently that didn't deter the girls. So they continue talking to these young men. And Ella decides at one point that maybe she should, you know, take them to the side and say, hey, look, maybe this isn't the best light. So when she's in the back, she hears one of the girls. She's like, you know what? Maybe these aren't the good little innocent girls that I thought they were. So she minds her business and goes about her life. The next day, she hears on the news that one of the girls is missing. And she definitely starts to feel guilty. So due to her guilt, she goes to the police and comes forth as a witness. However, nothing comes of it. So a year later, the guys have not been found and the missing girl, her name is Anna, has also not been found. So of course she still feels quite guilty about the whole situation. And then she starts receiving these mysterious postcards. Why didn't you help them? That type thing. And so she worries that her and her family may actually be in danger. So Ella starts working with an investigator and with the detective to try to help find Anna. And Anna's friends and family are actually doing the same, but all these secrets start to come out that may or may not have something to do with the case. I thought that this was a good book. It talks about obsession, about guilt. I mean, what would you do? You don't, you know, you don't really know until you're in that situation. It talks about the family bonds, um, stress in times of stress and how people blame each other. There was a lot about detective work and about floristry. So if you're into flowers, this is your book <laughs> for sure. It had sensitive topic like sexual abuse. So that could be a trigger for you. I did think that it was very suspenseful. It did the whole suspense thriller drama type thing very, very well. Probably one of the best I've seen in quite a long period of time. Each of the chapters ended in a very ta -dun -ta -dun tight way. And so you felt that you wanted to keep reading. You know, I had a hard time putting this book down because you kept having reveals and little cliffhangers at the, each of, at the end of each book. So definitely very suspenseful and it built that drama for you. I do think that the book dragged on a bit and that it could have ended sooner. I think that, that my mind was just blown at the end with the reveal of who actually did whatever to Anna. It was something that I did not expect. So I was definitely surprised. I was surprised at a lot of different parts in this book as well. So one of those books with tons of twists and turns that you're going to like if you like a juicy novel. I think that the characterization of these characters was excellent. I did feel a connection. I also think that the audible narrator was a great choice. Now, if you are not someone that likes spoilers, then thank you very much for listening. But I'm about to tell some more tea about this book. So <laughs> here we go. Okay. I so think Sarah having sex with the convicted convict on the train was way out of left field for me. I was absolutely shocked. Just is her self-esteem that low? And is she that 
thirsty for attention that that is the route that she's going to take to get it. I also felt that she was a very bad friend for not leaving with Anna in the club. I mean, my mom always said, we go together, we leave together. Apparently, Sarah does not subscribe to that theory. I think that Ella is a very smart businesswoman, how she grew her flower shop. I love that she doesn't waste any flowers. I think that's really good for the conservationist in me. However, I think that she had some very horrible judgment. Okay, so you're getting these threatening postcards in the mail. Your family thinks that you're in danger, and yet you're still cavorting around around town, going to your flower shop early in the morning by yourself. When you have your son in the house, that's an option to go with you and should be going with you. You're leaving the doors unlocked, and you're not setting the security system. I mean, how much more can you put yourself in danger? This is somebody that is a danger to herself and needs to be stopped. I also think that Luke is babied way too much. So Luke is 17 and gets his 16 year old girlfriend pregnant. He's crying and all of this stuff. Okay, how distraught are you, okay? Not to mention, <laughs> They decide to reward him. They get him a car. They're letting him off work. They're telling him that he can stay home from school. I mean, come on now. This kid needs a reality check. And Ella and Tony are definitely not it. I was also shocked, but not too shocked, when Ella's name was released to the press as um as a witness and on the hostage situation when on social media all the pictures were put you know on social media it's unfortunate that these days we live in a society where people are so quick to put things on the internet instead of thinking about the safety of the individuals involved so i was very disappointed in that but it definitely is not shocking for me at the least and regarding the hostage situation, I I kept sitting there thinking, why are they so sure it's Anna? Like, I know that they want to believe that this is Anna, but Anna's been gone an entire year, okay? You really think that this guy gonna is gonna have her at the window after a year? I mean, to me, I immediately suspected when she's gone a year that she's dead, but, you know, they held out hope and I commend them for doing that. But there's a certain amount of reality that they need to, that her family needs to expect from that situation. I felt that the sex protection cult, if you want to call it that, was an interesting idea, definitely unique. Um, I think it's great that you have communities like that, if that is something that's the case, to protect the victims. I think it would have been a good plot line for Sarah's dad, as much as I hate that guy. I think it would have been great for him to make some sort of appearance, for them to get some sort of revenge or something on him or whatnot. But, you know, it, I understood why they didn't want to center on that plot line a little bit too much. And in the end, I did not suspect him at all. I mean, he was Mr. Golden Boy. I suspected Sarah's dad or I suspected Luke in some fashion. Overall, I thought that this was a good book. It had all the makings and the trappings of a Hollywood feature film. So thank you very much for listening today. I got all this stuff off and I got to figure out what to do with my nails. So that's another day. Bye-bye.